Oh, she's bloody windy. Well, well, good to be back. In this episode, what we're going to do is head up there. We're going to get some quartz and uh, we're going to do the dissolving of quartz in um, that process that I talked to you guys about. Hey, team, here we are. We've made it, finally. Uh, so we're just going to get some bits of quartz from down here. Uh, I guess we'll just take that one. Take a few of these smaller ones. There we go. That should be good. Uh, grab a few extras. I want to try and get one that's a similar size to a piece that I've got that's got gold in it. And then we can just test it out. See how quick it actually works. That should be enough just there. Stick them in the back pocket. And there's a bigger one. We'll just take that just for safekeeping. And I've got some pieces at home with ironstone as well. So what we'll do is we'll do some ironstone dissolving as well because the process will work the same. So let's go because that's a big cloud coming over and I don't want to get rained on. Oh, here we go guys, absolutely awesome, good to be back. So what we're going to do in this episode is we are going to dissolve silicon dioxide from gold. Actually in this one we're going to just dissolve the quartz but I've got some ironstone there that's on gold as well so we'll just drop that one in. Um, so the things that you're going to need here are an electric element, so an electric hot plate, a stainless steel creamer. You'll need a good stainless steel creamer because the sodium hydroxide will um, affect it if it's not that good so best way to check is put a magnet on it. If it's got good chromium and nickel and other elements the magnet won't stick. Whereas the more iron that it's got, uh, the magnet will stick more, okay? One stainless steel spoon, tablespoon. You will need some water. You will need some sodium hydroxide. So 980 grams per kilo, which will be 98% um, sodium hydroxide. People will know that as caustic soda or lye. Some PPE, rubber gloves, safety glasses. Uh, also some leather gloves, so you could put rubber gloves under the leather, leather gloves. Breathing apparatus. I've got the Sunstrom SR100. Okay, so this bowl here, that's just for a lid, so we need a lid for the creamer. Okay, so once we put our mixture in there, you'll need a flat, you can just have a square flat piece of stainless steel as long as it covers the top. So I've just used this because it was very cheap. It was only $2.95 for that. Okay, and then what you'll need as well is a well-ventilated area. You wouldn't do this in your kitchen with the range hood, that's for sure. Okay, so outside, uh, whether you're in a shed that's got well, good ventilation, that'd be great. But this stuff will corrode. Uh, metals and other stuff that it comes in contact with, it's not too bad on stainless plastics and that sort of stuff. But aluminium and steel and iron, it'll corrode it pretty good. So nice well ventilation. Today is absolutely perfect because we've had storms come through and we have... 100 km an hour winds apparently. Alrighty, so what we're going to do with the first process is we're going to turn on that hot plate. Okay, step one, turn the hot plate on and let that get to full temp. Alright, so we'll switch that on. There we go, that's full now. And um, we want to get this, it's going to be 350 degrees Celsius, that mixture. So once that's turned on to full, uh, we'll just use this. You don't have to use this to test it, but you might only need one of these for testing if you don't know how hot your element gets to. Okay, so we'll just check that temp now. That's right in the middle. And we have 258 degrees Celsius. As you can see there now, we're at 290 Celsius. That's at 312. So you can use one of these if you want, just to double check your element. But once that gets to 350, we will chuck that on. Okay, so at this point, before we open up this, what we're going to do is we're going to put the safety gear on. This and the gloves, and we will get that happening. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to double check that hot plate. Alright, so we'll put that on. Okay, that's coming back at 364. Okay, that was overloading at 380, so just adjust your thermostat down until you get it to roughly come in, and in on and off at about 330 Celsius. Okay, so I've got my safety gear on, but I don't have the mask because I need to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, we're going to take two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of this of the sodium hydroxide okay like I said this has to be the 98 percent mixture 980 grams per kilo now what we what what the idea is is to get this 
submersed just below that mixture just there so okay so we just took the sodium hydroxide we took two of these now what we'll do is we'll just add one of these cold water make sure it's cold okay now the idea of this is to make this into a paste okay that's well and truly enough now that's not going to be enough um, to cover that piece of quartz so you can just tell you can see that's not going to be enough to cover that quartz so we will just put another one of these in and we'll just go one more because I think this will be enough once we get it to this stage okay so you can see that in there all right you just want to turn this into a paste just wet it enough so it's not dry Okay, we'll put just a touch more water. So what the water is in there for is just to help that sodium hydroxide turn into molten. Okay, that's all done now. And you'll feel that start to warm up because that's what the water will do to it. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll put our quartz in. And here goes the piece of gold that's going in. Now we'll just push them down underneath the mixture. Okay, if they're not if they're not covered right to the top, you need to get that mixture above the top of them. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. You can see in there. Okay, they're below that line of um, caustic. Okay, so now we'll just double check our temperature again. Okay, here we go. We'll just double check that again, and there we go. Now we're sort of hovering around that point, which is pretty good. 345 will be perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put the lid on the creamer. Okay, so I stick mine like that, nice and flat on there, then we put that straight on. Now, I'll just walk away and leave this go. Once that uh, water evaporates out, that'll turn the lye, the caustic soda, the sodium hydroxide, that'll turn that into molten liquid, and then the water's just there to help melt that caustic down. Okay, so... We'll do that. It's very, very pungent and cost uh, corrosive. Okay, corrosive, eh? Very, very corrosive, the fumes that are coming out of here as soon as we put that on. So, like I said, the mask is an absolute must if you're going to stay around it. If not, just, just walk away and leave it do its thing for a little while. There we go. We're going on. Okay, that's on there now. We will just leave that and um, definitely stay away. If you stay around it and it's nice and windy, Make sure you stay upwind from it. Okay, so take your timer and set that for one hour. We will go now. And there we go, timer is counting down. I'll come back to you. Put all your lids and everything back on, obviously. And that's it. Once that water evaporates out and that sodium hydroxide turns to liquid, to molten, um, then you can take the lid off and check it. You won't get any more of that really bad fumey stuff coming out. Um, and then yeah, it's quite easy. Leave that for two hours and just every every now and then, it should only take an hour, but after 40 minutes you can take the lid off, check it, check to see that it's dissolving enough. If you want it to fully take off the quartz, just leave it in until it's all gone. If you want to have a piece where you want to leave a little bit of quartz on there, then just check it every now and then and get the quartz to dissolve down to the stage that you need it to. Very easy process. Okay, so that's been going now for about half an hour. What we'll do is we'll just check that. So we're a little bit, little bit high on the temp, but you can see it's up and down. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll take the lid off and we'll just double check on that. Okay, so we'll take that lid off. That's bubbling away, beautiful. Ooh, smelly. Okay, so that'll be a brown liquid. Okay, so while you're waiting for this to heat up and you're waiting for that hour to run down, 
The best thing you can do is go back and watch an hour's worth of Mon Lab Gold videos. That'll keep you very occupied. Very important step, that one. Okay, and here we go. Countdown is on, and that is one hour. Okay, so now what we're going to do, obviously we've got the gloves. We will take that off. And you'll see that's going to discolour on the bottom of that. That's just the caustic soda doing its job. And we will take... Okay, so in this process we're just going to get the spoon and we're going to check the progress of the quartz and see if we can grab any pieces. Okay, so now that we've checked that they've dissolved down, we can't pick any of those up with this. What we will do is turn that off. Now what we do, seeing as that is dissolved the quartz fully, completely, we will let that cool down, okay? So we'll let it completely cool off before doing anything with it. And then I'll come back to you and we'll show you what we'll do next. What we'll do is take this off and we'll sit that, sit that down, okay? Now we just leave that cool. We need that to cool off completely. We can leave that open like that and then that'll solidify. It'll go like glass. Okay team, now that complete solution has solidified in there. It's a total solution of um, silicon dioxide and sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's solidified. Now what we need to do is turn this back on, warm it up just a little bit, add the cold water to there. So that's all completely cold now. So you wouldn't add hot water to that because you don't add hot water to caustics and all that stuff. So we tip the cold water in and we put it on there and we just warm it up. That'll turn that into just a very light liquid and it'll dilute it even more. And then we simply tip it out and then we're good to go. Okay, so we'll turn this on. Okay, so we only need to go to about just a little bit below two on this one, okay? So you wouldn't even, you, you won't need to boil it. Okay, so we'll add the water in there. Okay, so the amount of water that you want to put in there is twice as much as what's in here. So you could take that up to halfway. That would be totally fine. Okay, so here we go. As you can see now, we've got that solution in there. That's the total solution diluting down. Um, we will check the temperature. So we don't want to go too high. That's sitting on 100 just there, maybe up to about 140 or something, and then just sort of let it um, do its thing. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll take our spoon. Now suit yourself. You can take the top or the bottom, whichever one you want. And we'll just give that a little bit of a check in there. So you can feel it starting to starting to dissolve okay and then another way you'll know is the water that you've just added will start going just very light light on that brown color okay we'll just give that another stir and you, you'll feel it in there you'll end up getting little low spots in there that's that's starting to get really really good now make sure you got your safety glasses on Exactly why. See that little bit that just splashed out? Plus your safety guard, um, gloves as well. Very, very quick process compared to leaving your quartz in Alley Bright, which has got hydrofluoric acid, which is very, very deadly. Even 1%, like they say, 30% safe for consumers and the public, but to be very honest, I wouldn't be touching that stuff because once it gets in your system, it's not very, very good at all. Um, whereas this caustic soda, it's still pretty dangerous, corrosive, uh, as long as you take good care with it. But if you get it on your skin, um, just wash it immediately with cold water. It'll take a fair amount of time for this to actually do some damage on your skin. So you've got time to get to cold water to wash it off. Okay. Make sure you've got first aid kit with an eye flush, because if you get this stuff in your eye or any chemical in your eye, you need to be able to flush it out with an eye flush. Okay, here we go. So we'll just give that another stir. And because we've added water, you'll get some evaporation. So make sure to wear that mask if you need to. So. And there we go. That's it. That's how you do it. Let me just, okay, let me just tip this in. Okay, so I'll turn that off. That's fully turned off now. Normally I don't do it this way. Normally I'll just go and tip this solution out but let me just tip it in okay this is just for visual purposes and there's the gold okay 
Okay, now I want you to look in here. Okay, you can still see little bits of um, quartz in there. Okay, you can still see little bits of quartz in there as we tipped it out, but it's broken it all down, it's dissolved it all, except those little bits there. So if we had to left that in for an hour and a half, even two hours, normally I'll do it for two hours, that would be just all liquid, okay? Very, very cool, absolutely awesome. How good is that for dissolving quartz? Liquid quartz right there, you little beauty. Now I'll get the gold out. Okay, so here we go. What we're doing now, we've got this solution here. We've got some warm water. Okay, we'll just make sure that's warm. Here we go. And then we'll just take that into there. And there we go. And that is how you do it. Okay, because gold's 19 times heavier than water, 19.3 times heavier, your gold's not going to run up and then out. So even if you've got flower gold in there, <clears throat> it'll push to the sides, but it's not going to run up and out. Just don't put too much pressure in there. It's like anything with gold. If you put too much pressure, your gold will come out, like if you held in there. There we go. Okay, team, there we go. That's absolutely awesome. As you can see, we've taken that quartz from a solid, then we've turned it into a liquid, and then it's solidified again with a more diluted um, mixture, I guess you could say. And then we warmed it up to dilute it even more. And um, yeah, that's very, very good. So as you can see, there's still quartz there, but if you leave it in for two hours, we've completely dissolved easily, easily more than 50% of that quartz that was in there originally. Um, that's very awesome. So as you can see just there, that's the gold with the ironstone. You can see it's removed an absolutely good amount from that side of it. And then we've still got a little bit, just a little bit in there. But um, ironstone's a little bit hardier. So you just leave that in for three hours would be good. And that will get rid of it completely. Um, it's just trial, trial and error. So if you put a bigger piece in, it's going to take longer. Smaller pieces will be very, very quick. But that's awesome. Very, very awesome. Um, that's how you dissolve quartz from gold. Well, if you guys enjoyed that, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Very quick process compared to leaving your gold in chemicals for days, weeks, and sometimes months. And um, with good results sometimes, but this is very, very fast. As you can see, that was an hour process to do that much. Two hours, done. All, all done. Obviously, if it's a bigger piece like this, you'd probably use a little bit bigger creamer, bigger stainless pot. And then um, same temperatures because it'll still do this. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Oh, big, big moth coming in to say good day. So, yeah, that's absolutely awesome. Um, hope you guys can do it. If you've got any questions, chuck me in the comments down below. If there's anything that you're not sure of that maybe I've missed, chuck it down below. Love to hear from you all. Um, absolutely awesome. Thanks very much to all of you awesome subscribers. I will talk with you next time. Hopefully we'll get out and find some. Oh, actually, no, no, no. That gold that I've got in quartz inside, uh, that gold that I found in the quartz in a few episodes ago, we are going to do this process, and you guys are going to love it. We get to see what comes out of it. So I'll film up that whole process, and you guys can be with me the whole way. Very cool. So keep an eye out for that video. Very awesome. Um, if you need to know where any of this stuff comes from, uh, shoot me through a comment and I'll let you know. I'll leave all the details in the description down below of the stuff that you need. Catch us all later. How cool is that? Ooh, ooh.